we are going to start our wellness workshop today. And in our workshop, we're gonna go through six different practices. We're gonna start with exercise, then move into our art journaling. And that is where I will nurture your mind with some information about our specific topic today. And then we will say a meditation, do some affirmations. And at the very end, we're gonna set your intention for the next week about how you wanna use what you've learned today through this topic. So our topic today is resilience and resilience is about being able to bounce back from challenges or obstacles or things that life seems to throw at you and you're like, oh my goodness, what am I gonna do with this now? How am I gonna handle this? And when we have resilience, we're able to learn and grow from that experience and to continue on. So for our exercise portion, we're going to do some yoga balancing positions and we'll go through four of those. You know, if you've done this before, the exercises are very, very short and quick, but please feel free to um, do them a little bit longer if you would like. Okay, so our first pose, we're going to start with the tree pose. This is a very common um, yoga position that helps with balance. And when you start, it's easier to just grab your big toe or your ankle. It's easier for me to grab my ankle and place it right above your um, knee on the other side of your foot. These pants may not be cooperative, they are um, <laughs> really slippery, but it's, so I can't hold my leg there this time, but um, you can just hold it in place and it's still balancing. When you get better or you don't have pants that slip, <laughs> see it just slides right off. Okay, um, you can just do like this or like this and count for three breaths. And even if you can only do to here, that's good too. Obviously, this is something I need to be working on. I used to be a lot better at this. Breathe in. Okay. This next exercise is the warrior three pose. And typically you go through all of the warrior poses first with uh, warrior one, then warrior two, and then this is warrior three where you um, put your hand on the ground. No, you, um, sorry, I'm thinking about something else. All right, you bring your um, both arms forward, you lift your back leg up, and you focus like this. If, if this is difficult for you, you can see I don't have my leg up as far as you would normally if you were no good. You can also lean against the wall. And if you have some yoga blocks, I have this cushion, you can lay your hands on that and lift your leg up. From this warrior three, we're going to move into half moon, and that just raises your arm up. And if you want to do this against a flat wall, that could be helpful as well. And you just take about three breaths here. And then we're going to do a goddess pose, and that is simply a wide squat. Take three breaths. Okay, now we need to do the other side. Do the tree pose in here.
Okay, I have prepared my space. I have my art journal here. You can use just a sheet of paper if you would like. Uh, watercolor paper is good too. I have my paintbrush, my paper towel, which has been used a couple of times, but not that much, so it's still working. Um, a little bit of water to dip my brush in. And I may actually move it over here because I'm using this hand. So you're not gonna be able to see it, but I'll be dipping it in here. Um, and then I have this watercolor paint set. This is the one I got from Amazon. I really, really like it because it has very um, pretty and vibrant colors. You can actually tell what the colors are here. Um, so sometimes this is really important to refer back to. I have picked the wrong colors before um, just because I think that they're, they're the black or darker color and they end up being purple. So see all of the colors here and it came with the brush that I'm using and then we usually trace or outline things in this black pen as well okay. so let's get started I'm gonna go ahead and start um, drawing the outline of the picture that we're going to do and let you see it and then you can pause the video and draw what I have drawn so far but the idea is that we will um, draw kind of a hill here with some roots and it'll be kind of um, a tree but it's not a tree it's going to be a person that is leaning in this direction with a cloud right here blowing them down so because they've had these roots they're not being knocked down and we'll get to the symbolism behind all of that as well as we we draw it okay okay so I know this was a little bit more to draw than usual and you didn't see me drawing it but I'm looking at something else to draw using the same device that I'm recording from so uh, that's why it's a little takes me a little bit longer um, but I will walk you through what I have drawn so that you can see the details and we'll finish up so I drew the legs at an angle um, with her pants and her shirt and then just a simple little face and longer hair that's flowing in the wind um, just her ears her uh, um, brows just some little circles for eyes a little you for the nose and just a straight line mouth because she's probably gritting her teeth and holding on for dear life <laughs> um, and then in the corner here this is the big cloud that is blowing the wind um, you can see this is kind of like a um, u-shape with a wisp in the middle and the nose here um, with these lines and then a c for the cheek and the lips and the chin here I don't have anything down here yet so we're going to continue to draw this area right now if you would like you can ooh, that went in and out you can pause the video and um, draw this and then come back to watch drawing the rest of this part I've drawn lots of roots before. Sometimes the root systems, you know, are really good and sometimes they're not. But um, if you just simply do like a light sketch, you can kind of get it and erase it if you need to. And then you're going to just take pieces out and then I go back through and kind of erase different parts. Uh, you want to do some bigger ones. Some longer ones. Because we want to show that these roots are deep. some of our bigger ones in. We're going to go in with some smaller ones. Kind of like 
have little tree branches. You can have some go under. Right, the line's a little bit more squiggly. Remember, we're not going for perfection here. We're just going to simply enjoy doing art. Okay, and then sometimes there's just little lines that branch out too. So even smaller ones. We want these roots to be really thick. So when we have these roots that are so thick, we are not gonna be able to be knocked down, right? So now we have our root system. We are not gonna go anywhere with a root system like this. And I will, oh, I think I knocked the cover. Oh. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is the background because yesterday when I was doing this, um, I did not like how my background went because I did it a little bit late. So. First, we're going to do a really, really, really light blue color. So let's go with this one as our background color. I'm gonna put a lot of water in there because I want it to be extremely watery so that when it spreads out, it's not going to be, see, even that's a little bit, too vibrant sometimes the water and sometimes these colors can be a little bit more vibrant than you want them to be I'm gonna kind of do a small back and forth motion with my brush see this is the real color I'm trying to go for here so if sometimes if you just add a little bit more water to it Even this color that you've got will spread out some. All right, and because the wind is gonna go through her hair, I'm gonna go ahead and color through that as well. And then we will go over it in a, another color. Uh, one of my favorite things is having the wind blow through my hair. Well, not always, you know, when it's crazy wind, but when you go for a walk and you feel the wind, you think about how the wind is part of the earth. And another thing that I like about the wind is watching like when there's like a small group of leaves 
and the wind blows and it creates this circle with the leaves and they circle around each other. I think that's just really, really cool. I always think of it as a spirit. What are your thoughts on the wind? Although, you know, anything in too much is, can be uh, not great, so. I know, like if you've experienced where I live, we have a lot of tornadoes, and they can be really scary when the wind blows that strongly. Um, or if you live in a place that has hurricanes, that can be really scary too, to have the wind blowing. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of this side. If you wanna pause and do the same. Okay, I have completed the background. We may come back in and touch it up some. I don't know, we'll see how that goes. I'm going to go ahead and do this bottom portion. I really wanted the background to be darker and the roots to be lighter, but I think that's gonna be a little bit harder to do. Um, so we're going to go with this lighter brown here. I just color all of this bottom part. And then we'll go back in over the roots. The thing I like about watercolor is that you can see all of the, the drawings and the marks that you've done. So even if you color over it, you can still see underneath so you know what, what other colors you want to put on top. Okay, so while we're painting, let's get into um, resilience a little bit. What do you, I, th I know I've defined it a little bit earlier, um, but what do you think resilience is? What is it? mean to you? I don't think it's a concept that people really think about or talk about. And actually, most of the topics that I do talk about are not ones that people are really even thinking about. I guess that's one of the reasons why I chose to get people to start thinking about it. So what are some personal experiences that you have had with resilience? Think about when you were this person, you know, being blown by the wind. How have you been knocked down? Um, I know sometimes in my life, I feel like sometimes my story is not that strong, like not necessarily strong, but I have not had to deal with the same kind of like struggles and things that a lot of my clients have had to go through um, in their life. Um, I know like anxiety, I think everyone is dealing with anxiety in our society right now. But um, definitely depression, like, runs in my family. My mother was, has been severely depressed. She's, you know, now in her 70s and has worked through a lot of that. But it took her a long, long time. My sister suffered with severe, severe depression before she passed away. I had one sister that took her own life. 
So I have had to deal with some of that, not personally, but through other people. All right, now that we need to make our, sure our brush is really clean, I want it to do this cloud and I need it to be white. So, I don't want that brown to kind of get in here and ruin it. If it was a little bit of gray or blue, that wouldn't be as problematic, but brown in a cloud, not quite what I was wanting. So, make sure it's clean. I think uh, some of my biggest struggles I've had to overcome and be resilient about is, um, you know, things that you don't even know that you have expectations or like the reason I had kids is because you know, I think I'm a pretty decent person and my husband is definitely a pretty decent person. I thought, ooh, we're gonna need to have kids because they're gonna be really amazing and awesome and just like us. And my kids have not turned out like us at all. So I've had to readjust how I've thought about my children. Mm, I don't think I want that color. Let's maybe try to find like a darker blue. Maybe this one here, do some jeans or something. And so when there's things that are not in our control, that can be really hard. Like I don't have control over how my kids are gonna turn out other than, you know, try my best at teaching them and guiding them. And they are really, really amazing kids. I'm very, very grateful for them. But they also have some issues. And I bet every kid has issues But they just have a little bit more, life is not as going to be as easy for them as it even has been for me and my husband. Which I guess makes me the right person to help guide them, right? And that's kind of how I deal with it. I accept it for what it is. In, in life, sometimes you do have to just have some acceptance I'm gonna go with, let's see, what kind of shirt do I want? I'm gonna go with a, maybe this like lime green, and I'm gonna make some lines in it. Well, I may just paint the whole thing and then do some like black lines a little bit later. I may even just do that with the pen to make them stand out a little bit more. And then, of course, you know, having to deal with the grief, grief and loss of loved ones, especially, you know, more recently this year. It 
the sister that I was talking about that had some pretty severe depression and stuff, she um, died of cancer just a few months ago. I know we were really, really close. So, because of my practice, in self-care and making sure that, you know, of course, I'm still gonna struggle, like, it's still hard, I still cry. I don't know how often is normal exactly, but I'm still sad. But I'm also, Like, still getting up and working and taking care of my kids and living my life. Not stopping. Her, her death is not going to stop my living. Nor would she want it to. Okay, now that I'm looking at this, I feel like my top half of the body is a little bit disproportionate, but that's okay. Right? I have, I've, I have, don't know if I've told you this or not, but no, I'm not an artist. Um, no, I have no formal training in art. I have no formal training in yoga or anything like that. I just enjoy it. And so that's why I share it with you. What do I have formal training in? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, I am a mental health counselor. Well, I have my provisional license currently, but I should have it here soon. Um, I've been working as a school counselor for 15 years at this point. And Several years ago, I got my specialist degree in play therapy. So, maybe that's why I like to do things that are more playful. in starting this master moment business. I think we can be so rushed and so serious sometimes. And it's part of resilience too. Like just when you put things more in perspective, I feel like that is a great coping strategy with resilience. So we all need different coping mechanisms for when we have life struggles. And when you're, you've been able to stay in a positive mood for a long time, definitely helps and contributes to you being able to handle and deal with something that happens. It's when those problems, for me in particular, just add up. Like, you might start off like, today's going to be an amazing day. And then you don't have any hot water in the shower. Or you get a flat tire. Or, you know, like, life happens. And that's not to say, like, don't be frustrated about it. Like, don't be like, 
it's okay, everything's fine, you know? Like, that's not realistic either. Resilience isn't about saying, I'm just not going to let any of these things allow me to struggle, you know? No. There is growth in the struggle, so... Resilience is about embracing that struggle and saying, I've got this, and I'm going to seek help or assistance or whatever you may need to do. And on some of these, I'm just using the very lightest tip of the brush to get these smaller, finer lines. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but, you know. Okay, now we're gonna add the hair. Let's see what color hair we want to do. I think a brown would be good. Of course, you know, this is your painting, so I want you to choose colors that fit for you. some more lines through the hair as well and it dries okay let's take some of this black here and just make some little dots in the soil this can be some of our nutrients Okay, so while we're doing this part, let's talk about what are these roots? What can these roots symbolize for you? Is this your support system? Who are those people? Is it a friend, a family member? When you think about all the people and connections you've made in your life, and maybe you only feel like you have one, that's okay. You can always seek more. And the other thing too is, I think a lot of times we focus so much on people saying, you gotta have friends and support systems and yes that's true to an extent but you know what the reality is we walk this life alone we live in our minds alone and that means we have to be strong enough to depend on ourselves so while maybe one of these can be support there's a whole other host of these roots that have to be other things. And that's why like self-care is so important is because you are living this life really alone. Even when you're around people, only you are thinking whatever you're thinking in that moment. Therefore, it's so important to take care of yourself. So other things that these roots can, can be and symbolize are these practices. 
It could be your meditation. It could be different character traits that you embody, you know? Maybe you share a lot of gratitude or you have a lot of love to give and offer people. Maybe part of it is your work or your job. Maybe some is the skills that you have worked hard to learn. All of the things that make up you is this foundation. Okay, so let's stop here and we'll start our meditation. Find a comfortable and quiet space where you won't be disturbed. Sit or lie down in a relaxed position, gently closing your eyes. Take a few deep breaths, inhaling slowly through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. Allow your body to settle into a state of relaxation. As you continue to breathe deeply, imagine yourself in a serene, natural setting. You're in a lush, tranquil forest, surrounded by tall trees. Their branches swaying gently in the breeze. Picture the colors of the leaves, the texture of the bark, and the sunlight filtering through the canopy. Now shift your focus to a magnificent tree in front of you. This tree represents the embodiment of rooted strength. Observe its massive trunk, its sturdy branches, and its deep reaching roots that anchor it firmly to the earth. As you visualize this tree, Imagine that you are becoming one with it. Feel your body merging with the tree's essence. Sense the strength and stability of its trunk becoming your own. Envision your spine lengthening and straightening, symbolizing your own alignment and inner core strength. Bring your awareness to your breath once more. Inhale deeply, imagining you're drawing up energy from the earth through the roots of the tree up into your body. With each inhale, feel your connection to the earth, strengthening your body, filling with re vitalizing energy. As you exhale, release any tension, doubts, or fears. Picture these negative emotions leaving your body and dissipating into the air. Feel a sense of lightness and release with each exhale.
With each breath, visualize your roots extending deeper into the earth, creating a strong foundation. Sense your connection to the earth's energy, its stability, and its unwavering support. Now, silently repeat the following affirmations to yourself, allowing their meaning to sink in. I am grounded in my strength. I stand tall and firm like the tree. My roots run deep, providing me with resilience. I am connected to the earth's energy, unshaken by challenges. Stay in this meditation for a few more moments, focusing on your breath and the image of the written tree. Feel a sense of empowerment, stability, and inner strength growing within you. When you're ready to conclude the meditation, take a few deep breaths and gradually bring your awareness back to your physical surroundings. Gently open your eyes and take a moment to appreciate the rooted strength that you've cultivated within yourself. Carry the sense of grounded resilience with you as you continue your day. Oh, that meditation was so lovely. Okay. So I just remembered one thing that I forgot to add in this picture. I felt like it looked a little bland. So what we're gonna do is add some leaves that are blowing in the wind as well all around right here. I'm gonna take different colors of yellow and red. And then we're going to um, add some details to them when we get a pen. There is my red. Let me get some orange in there. some yellow a few pieces down here. Okay. Yeah, that looks 
looks a little bit better. All right, so now we're going to get our pin. Here. And we're gonna start outlining. I'm gonna outline the girl and this. And I'll be right back. Okay, so there we have um, that outlined a little bit. Um, I think what I wanna do is outline some of the other in a brown pen instead of this black so that I can get a little bit more texture of her hair and define this area a little bit more with a brown. So I have these set of markers that I really, really like. They have um, a wide marker and oh, I hear some brown here. It's falling all over me. Okay. Yeah, like half of those fell on the floor. Um, but they have a marker like this and then the pin portion here. So I'm gonna use this pin portion to add a little bit more texture to her hair. Um, but I did wanna talk a little bit about role models with resilience. So a lot of times we can get, the idea of resilience can come from listening to other people's struggles and triumphs, right? Um, and when we have a role model and we see how other people are dealing and coping with their struggles, it can help us figure out how to deal and cope with our, ours as well. Or even just putting ours into perspective, like, mm, I'm actually not dealing with anything that difficult. Or that I can't overcome. And sometimes that's helpful. Sometimes it's not though. Um, one of the people that has made a really big difference in my life that I don't actually personally know is Hal Elrod. And he actually came up with a Miracle Morning, which has a lot of these same practices. I just put a different spin and twist on it. And he was diagnosed with cancer. He was in a bad car wreck and almost died. Like he's been through so much and he has a really amazing story to tell. So who are some people that are in your life that are role models and like have made it through? I know um, like in my school setting, I had a student once who actually tried to commit suicide and it was very, very difficult and challenging for me because I had seen him and watched him grow up from second grade on, and um, he was maybe in 10th grade at that point, but he was able to get some help and he had a very difficult home life. But um, I also helped see him succeed, you know, he graduated high school and he went on to have a career and is doing really, really well. Got married. So, you know, people can struggle in life, 
but they can also overcome those challenges and that can give you hope. Like even though things are hard for me right now, having to go through this grief process, I know that it's, it's good for me. And also, I mean, it's just part of life. I may be able to use this experience to help other people that have gone through grief. Or who are going through it themselves. And if that someone is you and you want to chat about it, yeah. I am more than happy to talk with anyone about anything. Now, our final piece is going to be putting some little details on the, um, oh no, I just totally messed that up. <laughs> That's okay, it's okay. Um, let me get my brush and try to add some of this blue. That's okay. All right, we all have little mess-ups. I always say it's not about perfection, so. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of outline it a little bit in this brown and draw some little vein looking things on them. Maybe a little stick at the end there. And um, if you want to post your picture on social media and tag me in it, email it to me. Um, answer some of my questions I've asked about what, what I've gotten you to think about through this experience in your own life. I would love to hear from you. And you know, if you want to start doing some practices, I actually have um, a subscription program that helps people practice this every day. Now, I don't do art every day. I have a journal prompt that goes along with it that you would write about something. I have a full seven days just on resilience where I listen to a meditation, have an exercise book where you can do, or even just go for a walk. But the exercise is mostly just sort of what you enjoy because it's so individualistic as to what like people enjoy to move their bodies. That's why in this program, I really only focus about um, something that's related to this. Theme and, and th that's very, very short. see now the leaves look a lot better having this kind of outline and seeing the dimensions of it oh, I really like the way that's turning out and only you're gonna see my mess up <laughs> you probably won't notice that when you look at it for the first time but who knows maybe you will it's fine Right. All right, and there we 
have it. Resilience. Let's take a look. So share it and tag me in your picture or email it to me. I would love to see what you've done and I hope you have a great day. I almost forgot my last part of this wellness workshop is setting your intentions for the next day. So, or for the next week. So what are your intentions? How are you gonna be more resilient? Maybe what activities are you gonna do to help you be more resilient? and live the life that you want to do and master your moment. Bye.